So this video we're going to look at how you can take a reaction and using some data that's given to you in an exam you can actually calculate the energy change of that reaction uh, based on the bonds and based on the molecules that are actually reacting. Um, so for this video I'm going to base the whole thing around this reaction between hydrogen and chlorine to make hydrogen and chloride. Uh, but this is the reaction here. So one mole of hydrogen uh, gas reacts with one mole of chlorine gas to produce two moles of hydrogen chloride gas. So in terms of what the, reaction, what the reaction is, the reaction is this hydrogen, which you think about it as, as a molecule of hydrogen, so H2. It's a chlorine molecule looking quite similar. And then two hydrogen chloride molecules looking something like that. And we can see how the balancing works. So these two hydrogens, one there, one there, two chlorines, one there, sorry, and one there. So actually in terms of how this reaction would, would go about, these out of the billions of hydrogens and chlorines that are present in the container where we're reacting this, they would collide together and in the collision we would get a reaction. And provided that we meet the activation energy that is, and that reaction would lead to two moles of hydrogen and chloride being produced. Now in terms of actually thinking about what's happening here and the energy changes and what's taking place, the way I find it easiest to think about this is that if you imagine in this reaction when the hydrogen and the chlorine molecules collide the bonds between these are broken so we break that bond we break that bond too so what we end up with is kind of as an intermediate sort of if you want to think about it we end up with individual atoms which then go to be rejoined in different orders so we would have the bond formed between there and the bond formed between there so we take the molecule we break the bond uh, between the atoms in each one to give us separate atoms these then join up in different ways to give us our products and that in a simplistic way is, th is what the reaction is actually showing but what we can do is we can actually say well we can ultimately calculate this change here this energy change when the hydrogen reacts with the chlorine to produce the hydrogen chloride. So if we imagine then the process of this reaction taking place, we said that we break these bonds and therefore we make these bonds. So if we separate this into two, two parts, we think about bonds that are broken, therefore, and bonds that are made. Now, bonds that are broken, we have one bond between two atoms of hydrogen. So we could say we have one hydrogen hydrogen bond broken and here we have one chlorine chlorine bond broken on the converse the bonds that are made we now have two because there's two molecules here two hydrogen chlorine bonds and that's the total thing we've broken two bonds and we've made two bonds now one of the important things is that in this whole thing happening the process of breaking bonds requires energy so this process requires energy. So energy must be put in to break these. And that kind of makes sense. If you imagine ripping a piece of paper, you rip a piece of paper in half, you put energy in to break it. So what we could actually say in terms of energy changes, this part of the reaction is an endothermic process. That's a D, by the way. On the contrary, over here we have the complete opposite. We have, and this is the strange one to think about, is when the bonds are made, energy is released. So we require energy to break the bonds, but when we make bonds, regardless of what bonds they are, we actually release energy. Now the way I would remember this is I would remember that energy is required to break them, and just that the opposite is true when bonds are made, therefore energy is released. And so this is an exothermic value. Now actually, when we've looked in a previous video where I talked about endothermic and exothermic reactions, actually the way that, that comes to be is due to the balance between the bonds being broken and the bonds being made. So what I mean by that is that if the energy required to break the bonds is greater than the energy that is released when bonds are made, the overall reaction will be endothermic. On the contrary, if the energy released when bonds are made is greater than the energy required 
to break the bonds, then the reaction would be exothermic. And we can use some values, we can actually calculate that now. So what we can use is a, a data table. Now in an exam you would be given something like this but with probably much less on it than, than is on here now. And what this data table would do is it allows you to see really the energy required to break bonds and that's this thing here the average bond association energy this in in sort of layman terms is energy required to break bonds so all of these values besides all of these various bonds here are all positive values now we don't write it in because there's no need, but for example we could put the plus sign there. These are all positive because these are all values of bond breakage. You may at this point think, well that means I can, I can put these values over here and I can think about how much energy is required therefore to break bonds. But what about the bonds being made? How do I get to those points if this is just showing me the energy required to break bonds? Well, if we put a minus sign in front of any of these numbers, that then becomes the energy released when that bond is made. So we can use this table now and we can actually apply it to the situation. So we look through here and we, we let's find the ones that we need. So a hydrogen hydrogen bond, we're going to use that one. We are going to need a chlorine chlorine bond, so this one here, and we're going to need the hydrogen chlorine bond. So they're the three we need. The rest of them are just obsolete for this example. So we've broken so we are breaking one hydrogen hydrogen bond. That means we require 436 kilojoules of energy per mole. That's just the unit used here. We require the energy required to break the chlorine chlorine bond, and that's 243. So we add those together. And this value here is the value of energy that is required to break all my bonds. And that's going to come out at. 679 kilojoules per mole. The opposite is true over here. We look at our value for the hydrogen chlorine. So 432 is my value here. So I know that I've got 432 there. But remember that we've got two hydrogen chlorine bonds being made. So we multiply that by two, and that's going to come out at 864 kilojoules per mole of energy. Now the key thing here, remember, this is energy required or we could say energy taken in. This side is energy released. One way, there's two ways really now to work out the overall change. In terms of this being an endothermic process and this being an exothermic process, you can say therefore this value is positive and you can say this value is negative because this value, that's energy is required, therefore giving it this positive nature. Endothermic is therefore positive and with exothermic it's therefore negative. So then you would just add these two values together. We would just do 679 plus minus 864 and that would give us a value um, for the overall reaction which is going to be minus 185. The other way if you don't like this idea of putting plus signs and negative signs then actually don't worry about those at all and just think about it in this way do the energy required to break the bonds 679 minus the energy required to make the bonds, 864, and you will come up with that same number. And this then ties into what we've done before. This value here that you're actually calculating, this is the enthalpy change for that reaction. Of this one in particular, we can now see this is an exothermic reaction and we can see that because of the minus sign here so the delta H the enthalpy change is negative therefore it's an exothermic reaction okay so what I suggest is that I'm going to put another example up now you have a go at that example um, and I'll, I'll provide the data table there on the screen 
um, and then we'll run through that as to what the answer would be. Um, so we'll have a look at that now. Okay, so this reaction shows the combustion of hydrogen in oxygen to produce water. So two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water. And I want you to calculate the enthalpy change for this reaction. And to make it a little bit easier, I've actually given you kind of what the molecules look like, sort of little stick drawings. Hydrogen being two hydrogen atoms joined together by a single bond. The oxygen, here the molecule being two oxygen atoms joined by a double bond. And in the water molecule, we have two hydrogens and oxygen both joined by single bonds. So have a go at working out this overall energy change now. Okay, so hopefully you've got an answer of some sort. Um, what I'm going to do is going to work through this in a nice methodical way to let you see kind of what's happening. So let's look at first of all bonds broken. And then we'll just put over here, this will be where we put our bonds made. And again, imagine that we're breaking these down into single atoms to remake them into this molecule here, or these molecules here. So bonds broken. Hydrogen-hydrogen bonds. These ones here. But two, because the big two here tells us that. And over here, double bonded oxygen. And only one of those. So that's our total bonds broken. Bonds made. This is what somewhere sometimes people, people trip up. Within the water molecule, you have one oxygen-hydrogen bond there, and you have another one there. So bear that in mind. When we're breaking bonds, we're essentially severing the lines. So because there are two lines here, there are two bonds within there. So that means for each water molecule, there are two oxygen-hydrogen bonds, but we have two, so we have therefore four in total. Now, using the table, we just put the data in there. So, hydrogen hydrogen bond. It's going to be 2 times 4, 3, 6. And our oxygen is just 1 times 4, 9, 8, which is nice and easy. But our 2 times uh, 4, 3, 6, not that hard. We've got 8, 7, 2 over there. On the other side, we have four times the value for the oxygen-hydrogen bond, which if we look through here, we can find it's here, 460. For four times 460, which is, I believe, going to give us 1,840 in total. So the two ways to do this, then, you can choose to put the negative sign here, because this is an exothermic reaction. This is endothermic, and keep this as a positive, and then just add them, or you can do this minus this. It doesn't matter which we do, we're always going to come out with the answer of 498 at 872. We must add these together, remember, to give us the entire energy required to break the bonds. And we minus from that this value here, 1840, and that gives us a value of minus 470. Keep your units in, kilojoules per mole. And actually, as a check here, this is an exothermic reaction. Again, because the delta H that we've calculated here for the reaction is minus 470, and that's what we'd expect. This is a combustion reaction. Hydrogen reacting with oxygen is explosive. A lot of energy is released, and so it is going to be exothermic, and here it's been proved that without minus 470. So, I hope this video has been some help in um, teaching you how to calculate um, enthalpy changes from given bond association energies.